Hey members, it's Michelle, your branch president, and I have invited to join us today, Jack Kensington Evans from the AEU Federal Office. We are in a stalemate with our government right now when it comes to this pay freeze. Um, our, you know, last year, Michael Gunner um, stood up and said, we are freezing pay for all public staff. Um, that was before inflation exploded, before we're facing a nationwide teacher shortage, pay rises throughout the country. Um, and yeah, unions throughout the country are fighting um, for higher pay. And yet our government is sticking to this ridiculous pay freeze. So I've invited Jack here to talk about our next steps. We need to fight. And the fight is looking like it will be protected industrial action. Um, in term three. So um, Jack, could you maybe introduce yourself and just let these guys know who you are? Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Um, G'day members, thanks for having me on board for your campaign. Uh, so my name's Jack, I'm, I'm the Federal Industrial Officer. AEU Federal is, is a, a federal office um, that's part of the broader AEU. So we mostly focus on um, the federal uh, campaigns, so related to um, you know, what federal parliament and federal government is doing, but we also have capacity to contribute to branch campaigns um, like what the territory is going through now with its bargaining. So I've had the privilege of meeting with your branch executive and attending your annual conference, um, and I'm really stoked to be able to help you guys fight against this pay freeze. Um, I think it's disgraceful in a cost of living crisis when we need our teachers in the NT that the government is insisting on 0% even when almost 90% of their workforce threw it out the first time. So we need to fight back to change because they're obviously not listening to reason. Maybe they'll listen to power. What's the difference between protected industrial action and say striking? So we hear the word strike a lot. What, how does that fit in? <clears throat> yeah, so a strike can be a type of protected industrial action. Industrial action is when we either stop working or change how we work. Um, as part of an industrial campaign, which is what we're in, right? We want a new agreement. Um, what's protected about it? So protected industrial action is when you go through a Fair Work Commission process so that your boss can't take any retrib retributive action, any sort of discrimination, bullying, harassment, threatening your contract because you've taken industrial action. There's all different types of protected industrial action and we're gonna have the right to take a lot of them. Um, so it might, not, it might be not marking homework. It might be not writing reports, not responding to emails or attending meetings, or it might be, um, you know, closing your, closing your classroom, closing a school, withdrawing our labour. So a strike can be part of protected industrial action. Um, and it also involves, you know, all, all the other sorts of things that um, unions do when they're fighting for a pay rise. I'm a lawyer and an industrial officer, and I'll just be helping out with some of the back end work that the branch does um, during this busy point in the campaign. What, what is the back end to a protected industrial action campaign? Yeah, so there's a process that we need to go through in the Fair Work Commission in the next couple of months, um, and you'll hear many more updates from the branch as we go through it. Um, we're going to apply to be able to ballot our members about the types of industrial action that we wanna have the right to take. Um, so you'll have the opportunity to vote on that um, sometime in term three. Uh, and then um, the, the next steps will be uh, to take that up once we win that ballot, to take that protection industrial action. When we're going through that, um, there's technical questions that come up. Um, and of course, what I wanna do is make sure um, that you guys are powerful and supported um, about what your rights are when you are taking it. Um, so we'll be monitoring to make sure that the, that the department um, doesn't take any uh, discriminatory action, bullying, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that's that'll be my work in the back. That is actually a question that I get a fair bit from teachers is what if the department or what if my boss, what if my principal who works down, like we're not talking about huge schools here, the NT is full of small schools and people are worried that um, they've got to work often in the office right next door to their principal. You know, what, what um, could we tell teachers about that like how how can we protect them the protected part of protected industrial action how does that include that yeah so it's illegal to take any sort of um 
retribution, discrimination, bullying, harassment, even the cold shoulder, because a union member has taken action with their union. It's a fundamental right um, of protected industrial action. So, um, you know, we say to, uh, to our members, we've got your back on this. Um, this is absolutely a red line for this union and we will fight. If, you, if you've heard about it or happened to you that you're getting pushback for contemplating this action or taking it, you need to get in touch with your union right away so that we can bring that fight to the department because it's completely unacceptable. The other one I get heaps is um, teachers on short-term contracts worried that they're not going to have their contract renewed. And I've kind of got a two-pronged response to that. We are looking at a teacher shortage and we're looking at survey data that's telling us about 50% of our workforce is considering not returning next year. So the department can't afford to not offer you a contract next year. Um, but also I'd leave you with the question of would you want one? If, are you one of the 50%? Um, and yeah, I don't know, Jack, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's really important, Michelle. And geez, that's something that the whole community needs to know. You know, half of our teachers, because of this self-defeating pay freeze, are contemplating leaving the territory. Um, you know, what does that look like for your school? What does that look like for the education system to lose half of our teachers? Um, with some of the least competitive wages in the country, with some of the most challenging conditions in the country. Mm. Uh, no, the one thing I'll just add is that it is illegal to refuse to extend, give a new contract to a union member for taking action. It's that simple. Um, if, that's, if that's something that's coming up in your contract discussions, you need to let us know um, because we'll come down on the department like a ton of bricks if we hear that members are being discriminated against. I was also just wondering if you could maybe give teachers an idea of the kind of things they could be doing now to prepare for this. Um, for context, we've just finished term two. Uh, we're right in the middle of our, our three week break. Um, teachers are very much needing to relax and it's been a gruelling term. Um, but what are the things that uh, as they start to think about protected action, what could people be doing? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think one of the first um, actions and it involves a computer and sitting in front of it. So I know it's going to be challenging over the holidays, but it's really important. Um, a Protect Industrial Action Survey went out last week. We've already had hundreds of responses from union members, but we need more. Um, so uh, we are asking for um, branch members to make sure that they vote in that. Um, sorry, to respond to that. And that'll give us a lot of information about how we should be running the campaign. Um, alongside that, you know, I think something I, I'd want um, union members to emphasise to their colleagues is that you have to be in a union to participate in this campaign, to vote in the protected action ballot, to take protected industrial action, to stand with your colleagues, you always have to be a union member. Um, so that's the first step. And then the second is we need people to be active in their union. So that means participating um, in these branch structures. You know, we, we, when we, we're sending out these correspondence and it's really important that we have um, respondents to those surveys uh, and having those conversations with community. So with your school councils, with your parents, um, with your colleagues and with your families, they need to understand, hey, what's the implications of a pay freeze? What does it mean for an education system to have a cost of living crisis and teachers on some of the least competitive wages in the country? Are they going to be sticking around? Are you going to be sticking around next year? Um, people need to understand what's at risk here with this government's terrible refusal to bring a fair offer. And that leads me to my last point that I wanted to make, just about that public statement and engaging with community. So, you know, we, we know there's policies and procedures that employees need to comply with, but it's important to remember that you've got the right to speak on union business as a union member. Um, so, you know, keep those confidentialities um, that, the, that, that are required about our schools and our staff and our students. But, you know, you, you need to tell people and you have the right to tell people why you're running your union campaign. You know, what does this pay freeze mean? What implications does it have for education? We want people to be confident that they need to, that they can involve and we need to involve the community in this campaign. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Jack. And yeah, I very much encourage members to start thinking about and educating yourself on what is um, protected action. We'll have some um, 
we'll have some more content going up as you're on holiday. So definitely enjoy your holidays. Don't feel like you need to be um, doing uh, too much yet. The best thing that you can be doing is restoring yourself and getting ready for the fight that we've got ahead of us in term three. Uh, but we will be putting out heaps of information over the next couple of weeks on um, what the next steps are. So look forward to that. Um, it's going to be a really interesting time for our union. Um, we're really bracing for a fight and it's good to know that we have your support all the way from uh, Chile, Melbourne, I can see by your jacket. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Um, I'm really happy to be helping you guys out and uh, sending my solidarity from down south. Yeah, awesome. Thanks heaps, Jack. Cheers.